The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him, owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, be patient with me, and I will pay it back, pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he had paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you have not had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives his brother from his heart. When Jesus finished these words, he left Galilee and went to the district of Judea across the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. God's mercy endure it forever. It would have been inconceivable in my own mind that right from the heart of Joshua, the one who took over from Moses, the servant of God, that divine mercy is already written there, boldly. It could have been inconceivable many years ago for me to see that. But the Lord opens his words and makes us to see that right the promises that God made to Abraham in the Magnificat, he said the promises he gave to Abraham and his children forever, the promise of mercy. So after Abraham, after Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we have Moses leading the people of Israel out of the land of captivity. And so Moses had passed on yesterday at the age of 120, and God has chosen Joshua, the son of Nun, to lead the people continuously to the promised land, because his mercy endureth forever, and what he says will be accomplished will come to pass. 
So Joshua is beginning his first mission. And God asked him, instruct and command. See, those words are very, very important. Instruct and command the, the, the priest. And actually, 12 representatives of the priests of the tribes of Israel, the 12 tribes. So their priests should come. Representative of the whole of humanity. The people chosen by God, the representatives, they bring their priests. So the priests represent the people in relations to God. The priest is not set apart to have a bachelor's life. The priest is set apart to represent the people who are on their journey to the promised land. And of course, the promised land is heaven. So, they were to come and carry the Ark of the Covenant. And in the Ark of the Covenant, I tell you those things that are in the Ark of the Covenant. So, right in the bosom of the Ark of the Covenant is the Ten Commandments. Two, a species of the manna that had been given to the people, why they were you know, wandering in the desert, a species of the manna is there, so their sustenance is right in there. Three, the staff of Aaron, representative of the priesthood. So look at it now. The Blessed Mother sang the Magnificat when at the coming of the Lord Jesus in her womb, in praise of God, Especially looking at the connection with John the Baptist, who was going to lead, lead the people to see Jesus. She says, Son, my soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. The last verse, she says, The mercy promised to Abraham and his descendants forever. That mercy has come down. That mercy. So the Blessed Mother herself is Mother of Mercy, the Ark of the Covenant today. So in the Ark of the Covenant, as I said, we have the staff of, of, of Aaron, the representative of the priest. But Jesus is the eternal high priest. So that's the one that she carried in her womb. The manna, the food of sustenance that fed the Israelites throughout the wilderness. And today we have the bread of life. Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Third, mother had in her womb, the Ark of the Covenant had the Ten Commandments. And Jesus is the new law of God who says that he has come to fulfill the law of God. He has come to fulfill everything. So, in the heart of the Jordan, between the dragon and the deep blue sea, when the people were on their way to heaven, the promised land, the priests needed to sit and hold the Ark of the Covenant to open the land, the, 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 the waters of Jordan, to allow the people to get to the promised land. To the priests of God, he said, is called and enjoined by God. To hold the Ark of the Covenant. And who is the Ark of the Covenant? To hold the Blessed Mother. And so nothing shall happen to the believing people of God. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. They shall not fear the tempest of the Jordan. They shall not fear the malice of the foe. They shall not fear the one who comes to steal and kill and to destroy. The one who wants to drown the people in the sea of sin. And that's the incomprehensible mercy. That is the inconceivable mercy that has been given to each humanity. Because if you focus very well on the gospel, you discover that is what has been given to humanity. That man, the servant, a minister at the court of the king was unable to pay that debt. Of course, it's impossible to pay the debt of a lifetime. He had to give himself. It was, they say, huge talent he was owing. One denarius, one denarius 
is a day's wage. And when you owe 10,000 denarius, okay, one denarius is a day's wage. When you owe 10,000 denarius, how do you pay that? Who has promised you to live 10,000 years of work time? Okay? Of work time. So it is inconceivable for this guy to pay back. It's inconceivable for me to pay back. It's inconceivable, I think, for you to pay back this death. And he fell down and did homage. The time we fall down and do homage in adoration, in loving submission to God, then God gives us his mercy. Then he receives mercy. But humanity does not want to live on that. You know, the guy there, he said, you know what? I'll pay you back. Just give me some more time. How much time can you give somebody who is going 10,000 years of death? The Lord forgave him everything. She go, go. So the problem is, this guy has been forgiven. I have been forgiven. You have been forgiven. Hopefully, you have been forgiven also. And then I forget the forgiveness. I'm so ungrateful of the forgiveness. I'm, I'm so much taking my mind away from it. I just literally slapped me and choking my brother my sister who offends me and I'm so focused on it. That is where the ingratitude comes from. That is why the king looked at this guy and said, look at you. Stupid, foolish. Foolish you are. Ungrateful steward. Because it's the only gratitude of receiving freedom. And this fellow steward is owing his man, is owing his friend, his fellow steward, 600 times less, 600, sorry, 600,000 times less of what this guy owed his master. 600,000 times less. Oh, all right, all right. That's what we do all the time. We're nagging on that person who is waiting us. And we just, uh, the person who, uh, uh, no, I gotta get back. It, it, uh. <laughs> and yet we go to confession, ask him to be forgiven again. Ask him to be forgiven again. Do you see how we carry unforgiveness on our hearts? Let us rise and pray. Heavenly Father, we pray this day for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Pray for him that the power of God's mercy may envelop the chair of Peter and grant him the grace to lead the chosen people of God through the Jordan, the Red Sea, the Red Sea of sin that is plaguing humanity, placing us in a heart of misery. In a deep we see today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for our bishops all over the world, bishops here in America, Bishop Thomas Zinkula, our bishop. Pray for him that as chief priest, as chief shepherd, and chief teacher, the chief ruler of the Church of Christ here in Davenport, the Lord Himself will continue to support him, give him the grace, the power the unction of his love to lead us into the incomprehensible mercy of God which is available for all times. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Pray for our priest, pray for Father Paul, our pastor. Pray for Father Chris Young, priest, deacons, consecrated men and women. Pray that our fellowship, our love of divine mercy, our love of, of the sacred heart of Jesus, our love of the Immaculata, who is Mary, Mother of Mercy, who is the Ark of the Covenant, 
the true victory of the chosen people of God, the one who takes our misery and pain and insufficiency and lack of abundance and lack of mercy and pain to, the, to, to God's, God's presence, who may continue to seek love, love our blessed mother, love our blessed mother, have strong devotion to her, or else we will not be able to procure God's mercy for God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Pray for you all, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters, praying for the faith that God has given to you, praying that you continue to seek the Ark of the Covenant, seek the Blessed Mother, devote time and love to the Blessed Mother. She is the one who holds the, holds the omnipotence of God in her hands. She's human, but she has been given the immutable and unchangeable grace of releasing God's graces and mercy to humanity, to her children. Let us pray to the Lord. Pray for William Jacobs, for whom we celebrate this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, thank you for your incomprehensible mercy that has come to us through your Son, who said it is finished, it is achieved, it is consummated on the cross. Thank you for the Blessed Mother, who continues to be the rallying point and the dispensatrix of the divine graces and the divine mercy that has come for us through the fruit of redemption. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.